Am I the a-hole for leaving everything I own to my goddaughter instead of my daughter? I-45 female divorced my ex-husband when my daughter Kelly, 21 female, was around 12, after I caught him cheating for the second time. Literally everyone was against it. But I knew the in-laws wouldn't like it because they're traditional conservatives who don't want to deal with a public scandal. But it was hurtful to me that my own family was trying to pressure me to stay in the marriage in order to not lose access to the money and perks my ex had provided. Examples While we were married, my ex helped my brother get a nice job with a high salary and nice benefits, paid off my sister's credit card debts, and bought my parents really lavish gifts. The first time I caught him cheating, I wanted out back then, but my family convinced me to forgive him, and that I owed it to Kelly to fight for her to have the stability of a two-parent household. My daughter was only a few weeks old at a time, and I was in a very vulnerable state. So I agreed and felt so stupid when my ex did it again. But this time, there wasn't a, you weren't performing your wifey duties since you got pregnant excuse anymore. And this time, I wasn't going to be deterred and continued with the divorce. In truth, I wanted to keep Kelly out of this as much as possible. But my in-laws and my own parents poisoned her against me by painting me as a hypocrite for telling her how important forgiveness is, but that I wasn't willing to forgive daddy even when he was really sorry. I was distraught. I honestly don't think I would have made it through if it weren't for my best friend, Tina, who was my rock. In the end, I got a nice settlement and some alimony, but didn't get custody. I tried my hardest to still be in Kelly's life, but by the time she was a teen and she was fully convinced that I was the bad guy and told the courts she didn't want to see me anymore, I was heartbroken, but kept reaching out. During that time, I also managed to go back to school. I was studying accounting and managed to get a high-paying job of my own and have a nice life for myself. The same can't be said for my ex, who was sued by a former employee and fired by his company. Because he was so embarrassed, my ex burned through his savings trying to keep up his lifestyle, which included Kelly's college fund. Suddenly, she wanted contact again. But I won't lie and say that I wasn't hurt at the idea of her only wanting contact was for my money. I'd agreed to pay for her to go to grad school on the condition that she sign an agreement that she won't contest my will where I'm leaving most of that I owned to Tina's daughter, Laura, 18 female. The few relatives that I'm still on good terms with think that this will damage any chance at rebuilding a relationship with Kelly and that I should just split everything equally. However, I don't want to have the type of relationship with Kelly that I feel like I have to pay for. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Because I keep seeing this in comments and messages, I'll clarify here as best as I can while still trying to maintain some privacy. 1. I didn't get custody, but I did get visitation. And when Kelly was 14 to 15, she told the courts she didn't want to visit me anymore. 2. My ex came from money and had a good income, which meant he had better lawyers and the aid of my brother and parents during the divorce. 3. Not too long after the divorce, my brother lost his job. I'm not sure what happened, and I never cared to ask. 4. I'm no contact with my brother and very low contact with my parents and sister. 5. Tina is my documented power of attorney. Should there ever be a situation where I can't make legal decisions for myself and vice versa? 6. Alimony is not child support, so that's why I was able to get it. Now for the top comments. Not today, home. Your daughter has always been against you because of your family. And now at the moment when things aren't looking good, she wants contact. Ignore her. And your family basically wanted you to stay because they wanted his money. Yep. Not too long after the divorce, my brother was let go. And my sister was on the verge of filing for bankruptcy. Guess who got the blame? Especially when I wouldn't use some of the divorce money to help out the family. How on earth did your sister manage to get so close to bankruptcy when her debts were paid off? That's her own fault. The brother being let go? If it were wrongful termination, then he should have sued. They were just making you the scapegoat. Honestly, I wouldn't have given the daughter a dime. There are many ways you can be sure she can't contest the will. Obviously, you've already done what you've done. But going forward, you just do what's best for you. Not day haul, but there's a lot to unpack here. Does Kelly know what exactly happened? Is her missing college funds the only reason why she reached out to you? Or is it her being an adult and finally realizing fully what's going on? At the time, she didn't. 
But once the divorce was over, I did explain the situation. But she didn't believe me. If you're asking me if my daughter has come out right and said that all she wants me for is my money, then no. However, looking at the timing of her wanting to actually speak to me again, and seeing how the majority of our limited talks is about her schooling and her financial concerns, I'm inclined to believe so. I honestly would feel a bit better if she did sign the agreement and continued speaking to me as proof that I'm not just a checkbook to her. I'm sorry to say this, Opie, but I think she wants to take advantage of you now that the tables have turned. If her dad would have been loaded still, would she have reached out to you? I wouldn't give her the money, not even with that agreement. But if you do want to help her out, make her sign that agreement. Honestly, that's where I'm leaning more towards. I'm prepared to accept the reality that I'm just a checkbook to my daughter, but hoping she will sign the agreements is proof that she actually misses me and wants to reconnect. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to do a DNA test? My dad found out my mom was cheating and she won't say with who or when, but we know it's likely around the time she was on a stay-at-home mother. The thing is, she had all of us, two brothers, one sister, around the same time so any of us could not be my father's. He's divorcing my mother and wants us to take a DNA test to prove we're his children. Otherwise, he isn't paying for our college she promised to do so before this, and all of us have been counting on it. My sister, her oldest, did a test because she was confident she was related to our dad. She was likely pre-cheating, and she looks the most like him, so I was pretty sure she was. She's also in college and is relying on our dad. It is going to keep paying because of the results of the paternity test came back positive. I have a feeling I'm not my dad's biological kid, since I don't look anything like him. And people even commented I don't look like the rest of my family. I'm terrified because I think he's upset enough that he won't talk to me anymore and definitely won't be paying for my college. I don't want to take the paternity test because I don't want to know. But if I don't, I probably won't get college paid for. The money isn't in a college fund, but set aside as investments my dad has, it isn't going to my mom in the divorce proceedings probably. I don't know how things will go, and I'm starting college in September. I stupidly picked a pretty expensive school because I thought my dad would pay for it. I decided it was okay, but now even if my mom was willing to, I don't think she can afford it. I'm so mad at her and my dad for putting me in this position. I've told him I'm not doing the test and he said that's okay, but he will just assume I'm not his and not have anything else to do with me once since I'm 18 already. I'm living with my mom but not talking to her because of this. So you're 18 and just found out your dad may not be your dad and is punishing you for something beyond your control. Not stay home. Your mother is clearly an a-hole. Your dad is being an a-hole to treat you as a stranger if you're not getting a DNA test. This is a no-win for Opie. Even if it turns out he is DNA-related, he'll always know his dad was willing to throw him away over a piece of paper. He already threw him away. I've told him I'm not doing the test and he said that's okay, but he will assume I'm not his and not have anything else to do with me once since I'm 18 already. I'm sorry, Opie. Of course not, day home. Not day home. Your parents suck. I would have the DNA test done personally just to find out. And if you aren't your dad's, try to figure out who your bi dad is. It will help later down the line if your doctors ever have any hereditary health questions. You don't have to now for sure, but I eventually would once I came to terms with it. I am so sorry you are going through this. That is so awful to deal with as a 17 or 18 year old kid. Go to the college you think will be best for your future. I funded my own college. My parents didn't pay a dime, and you can do it. It's harder, but you are capable. I was going to say exactly this. Take the test for yourself, Opie. It's info you may really need in the future. It is so unfair of your dad to do this. He still raised you for Pete's sake. He just sounds like he wants to hurt your mom through you, kids. Oh, hon, of course you're not day home. But what are you gaining by not taking it? Is there anyone you can talk to? Your dad is being awful. I can't imagine being willing to walk away from my child. And you are his child, whatever a blood test says. My mom is trying to get me to not take it. I think because she knows I'm a result of her cheating. I think you should take it honestly. 
so long as there's a question mark, there will always be strain on things because of what your mom has done. Your best bet to salvage the relationship with your dad is to talk to him personally, tell him that you're scared of what the outcome could be, and then take it with him. Even if you end up not being his, if he ever loved you at all, you may be able to move past it if he can recognize that it isn't your fault, only hers. Edit. After reading some of the comments, I've decided to do the test. I didn't want to out of fear, but now it's clear it doesn't really matter and it's better I know for sure. Next story. Am I the a-hole for saying my parents should have stopped having kids when they started realizing they're all autistic? So, I'm 16 female, I'm the oldest of 8, and the youngest 6 have a combination of autism and oppositional defiance disorder. If you have ADHD, and 4 out of the 6 are nonverbal with high support needs, I'm expected to help out, and have pretty much been emotionally neglected since age 6, when my parents started popping out more kids. So, due to everyone's sensory issues and for the sake of routine, Christmas has been done in our house since I was 8, and that includes for me. Birthdays aren't really done either, and my parents spend so much time trying to keep everyone under control, that myself and my normal brother 7 male miss out on just about everything. Last Saturday was my birthday and I stupidly decided to ask my parents for something I've been wanting for a while. But I don't get an allowance and can't work due to helping out at home, so I can't save for it. It's not expensive, but it is out of my price range. They said no, expectedly, and reminded me for routine's sake we don't do birthdays in this family. I said I know, but maybe we could keep it to the three of us and do something away from them for once. They said no, and that I need to tailor my life to suit theirs unfortunately. I kind of snapped. It may be years of built-up resentment or because I was in a bad mood, but I said that I don't understand why they keep having kids just to make their neurotypical kids suffer more each time. They should have stopped after they had two diagnosed with autism. Neither parent is talking to me right now, and I'm starting to believe I was the a-hole and made an ableist remark. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Oh, sweetie, you are not the a-hole. I have two siblings on the spectrum. My mom never made me responsible or made me make sacrifices for her other kids. She made things work for all of us to the best of her ability. Your parents need to seek outside help, not to expect their neurotypical children to accommodate and make sacrifices, essentially making you guys become third parents. I hope you have someone you can talk to, like another trusted family member or adult. Please reach out if you can. This is not even remotely okay. Honestly, it's cruel to take a childhood away like this. I feel for Opie. It's horrible what is being done to her and hopefully she can get out of there quickly. Not day home. Having eight kids is a terrible idea in general. Also, you need to honestly have your own life. Your parents seem to be pushing responsibilities on you. What well, the kids are their responsibility, not yours. You should definitely try to find a job really soon. Agreed. But the parents need Opie to stay at home dependent on them as an unpaid caregiver, babysitter, and maid for them. They have no intention of letting her go ever and have a life of her own. They have already told her so. I need to tailor my life to suit theirs, unfortunately. Not stay home. Your siblings are your parents' children to raise. If they need help, they should look into live in help or long term care facilities. I think a little rebellion is in order. Stop helping them raise your siblings and get a job. Save every penny and move out when you turn 18. Sorry, your adult's selfish parents. And an unfortunately difficult situation to grow up in. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister-in-law to stop trying to guilt us by calling it a bonding experience every time she wants her kids involved in something? In general, my sister-in-law is fine. I don't love her, but she's generally not awful. She just thinks that everything should revolve around kids, and that everything that anyone does with her kids is a bonding experience and those are all so important. If anyone in the family is doing anything, she wants the kids to be involved. Even if we want it to be just adults, she starts guilting us. There are some things that's totally appropriate for her. Things like baking cookies? Sure, bring the kids. Building snowmen? Sure. Decorating for Christmas? Okay. 
But for example, when my husband, her brother, and I were going on a hiking trip, she kept asking us to take the girls, as it would introduce them to the outdoors and be a great bonding experience. We said no. This was our couple time, not family time. She got all stinky about it, and even tried to send them over with bags bagged in an attempt to guilt us into it. We mentioned over the holidays that we were going to be building a new addition to our home, and she immediately lit up and said how it would be a great bonding experience if we got the kids involved. Husband shot this down. It's something that he and I are working on together to make our home ours. Neither of us wants to have to watch kids with tools and hammers and nails, keep them on track, deal with the whining when they get bored, etc. She kept pushing about how maybe this would inspire her kids to take an interest in building or hands-on work, and it'll be a great bonding experience. I said, can you stop with the it'll be a good bonding experience every time you want to guilt someone into involving your kids? She got defensive and said that in a normal family, People would want to spend time with the kids. It wouldn't be seen as a burden. I said it's not a burden, but brought up our hiking trip as an example and said that it was intended for me and my husband to just like, hike, fool around outdoors, maybe drink a little in the tent and relax. She got pissy and was like, well, look at you, having all the time in the world to hook up but no time to spend with your family. We do spend time with family. We do spend time with the kids. We have even endured the god-awful family vacation with the kids just to make everyone happy. But we don't have kids, and we don't want everything in our life to revolve around kids. Sister-in-law is still upset about this, and keeps making passive-aggressive remarks about it to anyone who'll pay her attention. Am I the a-hole for saying that? Is free babysitting called bonding now? Yep. It's a better marketing plan. Victims, I mean family members, are more likely to agree to unwanted babysitting when they feel guilty about saying no. She is straight up trying to pawn the kids off every chance she gets. Her own argument doesn't make sense. I'll fix her sentence for Opie's argument's sake. In a normal family, a mother would want to spend time with her kids. They wouldn't be seen as burden. Having the excuse for bonding is just her way of getting them out of her sight really sad. Not day home. If you wanted kids around constantly, you'd have had your own. Seems like she's just looking to get some time away from her own kids by dumping them off on you, assuming she wasn't planning on hiking and helping with home renovations too. This was my thought exactly. She's trying to get free childcare. Not day home. Your sister-in-law is upset because her plan to pawn her kids off on you isn't working. It's a super entitled attitude, and you're right. They aren't your kids and you don't need to revolve your life around them. 